Well, I'm going to try my hand at making a bowl on the CNC table using layered pieces of plywood. I grabbed some three quarter inch Baltic birch from town and got the first piece fastened down to the table. Maybe a little unusual, but the first tool I grabbed to use on this bowl project was a 90 degree V bit. Setting up the project in a spire, I made a mistake right from the get-go when I meant to make the bowl 6 inches wide and accidentally typed 60 inches wide. For the height, I wanted to use all the z-axis travel, which is 8 inches. With my workspace now created, I drew an arc and offset it inward 3 quarters of an inch. I now had the shape of the bowl. I offset the shape outward 1 16th of an inch, which will be my margin for error. I spaced horizontal guides to match the thickness of the plywood I'm working with, which allowed me to start drawing boxes representing a cross section of the stacked rings I need to fit the shape of the bowl within. Kind of switching from the side view to a top down view, I drew rings to the edges of the boxes. Every third ring would fit inside the previous one, so I dropped them down. To help stack the rings accurately, I thought it'd be a good idea to lightly mark the next ring's outside perimeter, which is what the green rings are. I set up some toolpaths and ran a preview to see how it would look. The bull was going to take 11 rings cut from three pieces of plywood. After running the light V-bit path, I switched to a square end mill to cut the rings out. I've been using composite nails and a nail gun to hold down material lately, and man it works great. A little side tap snaps them free, and the router bit can go right through them if you accidentally place one in the toolpath. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the scrap rings that were left over, but Kelly had an idea. I started second guessing my plan to stack the rings using just the V-bit markings and decided I had better build a jig. I realized that if one ring was slightly off, then all the subsequent rings would also be off too, and I could pretty quickly veer outside of my 1 16th margin of error. I laid wax paper over the jig so it wouldn't get glued to the bowl and started gluing and stacking the rings. It's hard to see it because of the wax paper, but the rings very satisfyingly dropped into place snugly on the jig. And actually the vibit markings were super handy for knowing what area needed glue.
the CNC is going to take out the center? Yeah. It's upside down right now. Yeah. We had lots of snow. Mm-hmm. It's going to be stressful because I don't have too much room. Yeah, I was wondering how thick that was going to be. It'll be three-quarter inch thick. The next day I pulled the wax paper out and started getting ready to carve the outside of the bowl. I realized at this point that although the underside of the gantry clears eight inches, there are two bolt heads that hang down a quarter of an inch and the stack plywood was going to be too tall. After thinking about it for a while, the easiest fix I could come up with was to actually loosen the gantry and slide in a quarter inch spacer, which worked pretty well. If only I knew someone at Avid CNC, I might suggest to him that those two bolts could be countersunk flush pretty easily. <clears throat> Sammy, <clears throat> Corey. I put these holes in the bottom of the jig for clamping. And since the bull is getting carved from the top down, I put a couple more clamps directly on the bottom ring to make sure it stayed put. I'll just have to remember to get them out of the way before the bit makes it down there. And I got the machine zeroed on the center of the top plate. Back on the spire, I gave the outside of the bowl a small lip and the bottom of the bowl a base to sit on. I created the 3D shapes of the bowl by selecting the right outside half of the shape and spinning it around the origin. Then I created a 3D finishing tool path using a quarter inch ball nose. To create a flat surface using a round headed bit, the tool path steps over 10% of the diameter of the bit, which is 25 thousandths of an inch. And if you zoom way in, you can actually see these individual paths that the bit will travel. It took about six hours to finish, and it went great. Didn't have any issues. I also couldn't see any stepped grooves around the bowl, which meant so far my 1 16th inch error margin was holding up. Before I switched to milling the inside of the bowl, I wanted to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. If you're anything like me, you're always trying to learn new skills and explore creative avenues you haven't been down before. Skillshare is absolutely one of the best resources to help you along your journey. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I know how overwhelming it could be trying to learn how to use new software, and having access to good tutorials is critical. Skillshare offers classes on, I think, almost all the software you see me using in these videos, like Photoshop, Premiere, SketchUp, and even broader subjects like creative thinking and time management. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Skillshare has been a longtime sponsor of this channel, and I really thank them for their support and encourage you to check out the great content they have to offer. Thanks, Skillshare.
To carve the inside of the bull, he's going to have to make another jig that matches the shape of the outside of the bull. I made this jig a little bit oversized so that once I got it glued together, I could mill the exact shape of the bowl into it with the jig clamped down to the table. This also worked great for helping me reference the bowl because it established a zero point in the center of the jig, which means it's going to be easy to get the bowl exactly in the place it needs to be. I put a piece of double-sided tape on the four upper corners of the jig, which did more than I thought it was going to actually. It seemed really secure. I loaded up the program to carve out the inside and hit run. It's really making the ball nose work hard to remove this much material. So I actually stopped the program and switched over to a roughing pass with the square end mill, which cuts a lot better. This removes all the material down to a specified tolerance. Then I reloaded the ball nose program and offset the z-axis downward just a tiny bit to overlap the part I'd already done. The ball nose was much happier now and it was running a lot more smoothly. At the very end of the run, it started chattering pretty bad on the areas between the jig supports. I think if I were to do this again, I might do the inside of the bowl first when the material is thicker and has more support, but I was able to finish the program just fine. It was about now that I realized I must have got the scaling wrong when I was setting up the project. I had a lot of sanding to do. And then I hauled the bowl over to my barn to give it some food grade oil. I really liked how the layers of plywood looked. It reminded me a little of those terrible giant jawbreakers I used to lick on as a kid. When you'd get halfway through it, you'd see all the layers and your tongue would be all bloody. The plywood really soaked up the oil and went through the whole bottle. I found applying it by hand worked better than with the cloth actually.
that, my first bull project was done. I am sure a lot of lathe artisans would scoff at how this bull was made, but I really enjoyed the project and the challenges that came about from it, both on the software side and the machining side. Kelly and I have been using the bull a lot for salads and the like. It's even nice to just keep on the kitchen counter filled with hazelnuts from the farm. It's become our go-to bull to grab off the top shelf for any occasion.